أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الذي خلقني فهو يهدين والذي هو يطعمني ويسقين وإذا مرضت فهو يشفين والذي يميتني ثم يحيين والذي أطمع أن يغفر لي خطيئتي يوم الدين رب هب لي حكما وألحقني بالصالحين واجعل لي لسان صدق في الآخرين وجعلني من ورثة جنة النعيم صدق الله العظيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today I've decided to wear a turtleneck because they say only a select few people can pull it off. And I've been told that I am one of those select few. For those of you who do not know me, I am Nuh Qasim and I'm currently a freshman at Newar Charter School. During this quarantine and pandemic, I've been trying to utilize this time to my advantage, trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I've also been spending a lot of time with my family getting to know them better. And alhamdulillah, they turned out to be very nice people. But on a serious note, I came across a very uplifting and inspirational story a few days ago that I want to share with you, inshallah. There was a man, he was an alcoholic. He had no education whatsoever, no manners whatsoever. And he was one of the worst youth in his community. One day he was drinking with his friends and he would be the only one from his group to hold the bottle in public. Yani he had lost a sense of haya and a sense of shame. Um, and there was a man that came through his community that everyone is crowding around. A curiosity sparked in him to go see what was going on. So he goes and he finds the man on a donkey. And again, everyone interested in what he has to say. He goes up to him and says, who are you? And he was no sense of like, that was the kind of character he was. He says, who are you? With no respect. And they replied to him, this is Imam al-Sha'bi. He then asked who is a Sha'bi and everyone is surprised to see how he does not know who a Sha'bi was. Because during that time, um, he was very famous. Uh, compare him to a famous Imam or famous Sheikh in today's standards. And he said, uh, said again, who is he? What does he do? And they replied, he has a muhaddith. He asked, what is a muhaddith? And they uh, said he memorizes, narrates and teaches hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the man, he then approached the Sha'bi and says, if you are a muhaddith, then give me a hadith to kind of call him out, to kind of mock him. And now I want you guys to realize that this is what leaders and knowledgeable and wise people do and analyze what the imam did. You see, he said to him, uh, an Abi Mas'ud Uqba bin Amr al-Ansari al-Badri radiyallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna mimma adraka min kalam nubuwati al-ula. Verily, among the words people obtain from the prophets are this. If you do not have shyness or the quality of bashfulness, then you may do as you wish. And subhanAllah, after hearing this, it hit the man different and hit, and hit him straight in the heart. He then proceeded to change his ways. He left his past behind him and traveled to Medina to study hadith under Imam Malik ibn Anas. And this very man, that was an alcoholic, who had no respect, no manners whatsoever, no haya, went on to be the teacher of Imam al-Bukhari and muslim His name was Abdullah ibn Maslama al-Qa'nabi. One of the most famous scholars was an alcoholic, the same one whose sense of morality was so low that he would hold his bottle in public. And he went on to be a great, great scholar. Now, I'm telling you this story because I want to analyze the hadith and focus on what made Imam Abdullah ibn Maslama al-Qa'nabi change his ways. And to review the hadith, um, Verily among the words obtained from the prophets are this, if you do not have shyness, then you may do as you wish. And I would say that this hadith is especially important for me and many high schoolers and many kids my age, in that all of us are on social media. We literally can see anything. We can send and put out anything to the world uh, from our fingertips. But we have to be careful what we are watching on our phones, what we are putting out there. 
Because once we lose that sense of haya, that sense of shyness, it's done, it's over. We're a lost cause. Because if you do not remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching, if you do not remember that, if you completely disregard it, there will be nothing to stop you from doing haram. My dear respected brothers and sisters, may Allah help us and protect us during this dire time and um, steer us away from haram. And I also want to thank all of the board members that have been working so hard this Ramadan at IST to make this Ramadan as normal as possible. Sheikh Hadi, Sheikh Arqam, Allah. I know I speak for the whole community when I say your work is not going unnoticed. May Allah put barakah in what all of you are doing. Thank you all for letting me spend my time with you. And hopefully I can see all of you soon at the masjid, inshallah. And I leave you with the trademark, Sheikh Hadi salute. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, MashaAllah, tabarakallah, I'm a speechless Noah. I'm very speechless, MashaAllah. You surprised me today, Noah. MashaAllah, full of confidence, man. Too much, MashaAllah. <laughs> May Allah bless you, Noah. But the message was great. And the recitation was great, MashaAllah. By the way, Noah is one of, MashaAllah, one of my favorite students. There's also Noah, uh, MashaAllah, finished the entire Quran. He memorized the entire Quran with me, MashaAllah, Allah Akbar. Same as Medina Rasul a few days ago. She also finished the entire Quran with me, MashaAllah. These are, MashaAllah, the, the, the future of this community, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us haya before him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us haya before his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Great job, Noah, mashallah. Uh, Insha'Allah ta'ala, the respected brothers and sisters, today we have uh, a, a very important question. I wouldn't call it a question, but uh, I was requested by a, one of our sisters to offer a piece of advice to the married couples and also to the singles who are looking for a life partner. How to look and how to choose your life partner. She mentioned also in her message that I attended the halakas, the monthly family halakas about the family. Are you the, the husband that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes? Are you the wife that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes? And she benefited really from them greatly, alhamdulillah. And this is all the credit 100% goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So she's that um, asking because a lot of people are listening and we're in the month of Ramadan, maybe your advice will hit one person, will it change their life? So inshallah ta'ala, I will be more than happy. This is a very vast topic, um, but I will just touch briefly upon certain things. And if those things are there, then inshallah ta'ala, the marriage will be very successful. And if those foundations are not there, if those foundations are not there, then the entire building will collapse. So when you look at the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not talk exhaustively about marriage in the Quran, okay? In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not describe the things or in details, the things that will make a marriage work. There are some places in the Quran, very few places in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us some insights. So instead of describing the entire building, instead of describing the entire building, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the few pillars. Allah azza wa jalla mentions the few pillars, and if those pillars are not there, 
then the building is going to collapse, the entire building, which is very important. So in a number of places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially three places in the Quran are very important. The respect of brothers and sisters are very, very important. I would consider this as a must for each and every husband and wife to study and understand those three places because if we do not understand them, then, then the foundations are not going to be there in the first place. One place is in Surah An-Nisa. I believe that ayah number 35 of Surah An-Nisa. And then another place in Surah Al-Baqarah, they are your garment and you are a garment to them, right? And then one ayah is in Surah Al-Rum. One ayah is in Surah Al-Rum. These three places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the foundation of of any successful marriage. The foundations are mentioned in those three places. You know, most of the time, most of the time, the respective brothers and sisters, you know, you have, we all know that there are uh, specific rights that the wife has over her husband. And there are also specific rights that the husband has upon his wife. And there are something called what? shared rights and responsibilities. Most of the time, this is the problem. So for example, you come to say, most of the, the problem that I, I face, or I, uh, I do counseling all the time. And um, when it comes to spending, the wife has no problem. He takes good care. He provides for the family, for the children. Okay, and then on the other side, the, the wife is doing her job also as a wife when it comes to cleaning, to cooking, to this and that. So, but what is missing is something called shared rights and responsibilities between the spouses. And one of the most important, one of those rights, one of the most important, one of those rights is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in this ayah in Surah Al-Rum. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Among his signs is this, that he created for you wives from among yourselves so that you may find the comfort in them. And what? And he has put affection and mercy between you in that are indeed signs for those who reflect. He has put what? Affection and mercy. Affection and mercy are the most important two pillars for any, any successful marriage, for any successful marriage. And if these two things are not there, then this is like, will be like a sure way to misery and hardship at the end. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said affection, mawadda, it means loving, respecting, honoring. The respect of brothers and sisters in Islam, kindness. Kindness is an important fruit of marriage. Honoring one another, respecting one another, subhanAllah, taking care of each other, supporting one another, right? Aiding one another. This is marriage is, is, a, is a partnership. Money does not buy happiness. And money doesn't really bring that happiness. Sometimes you talk to people, I give her my credit card, she can spend whatever she wants. It's not about money. It's not about money. There is something way, way, way more important than money. It's not about money. Money will not bring. You can give millions of dollars, but subhanAllah, if there are physical abuse, mental abuse, spiritual abuse, and then emotional abuse, then your money does not mean anything whatsoever. We have to keep this in mind, inshallah ta'ala. So just to keep this in mind, affection and mercy, when these two things are there, then insha'Allah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in that marriage. Appreciating each other, the respective brothers and sisters. Most of the time we, we fail to show appreciation, right? We sometimes, the wife makes the husband feel that he's not doing anything, he's not doing enough. And the husband makes the wife that she doesn't do anything. And this is subhanAllah, a big, big issue 
So we have to be very careful, inshallah. So the best, because again, this is very vast and very deep topic. You can listen to my halakas again, they are available. But the most important thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so exercising good manners is a shared right between the two spouses. Exercising again, good manners is a shared right between the two spouses. The two spouses should interact with each other in the highest form, in the highest form of good character, in the highest form of good character. The marriage, the marital relationship should be pure and, and free from the, the language of the street completely to avoid foul language. This has, it should not be part of the marriage whatsoever. We still can argue, we still can disagree, but we have to argue and disagree in a very, very respectful way and very respectful manner. Aiding each other is very important. Most of the time we feel that Okay, I work all day outside that I come home, leave me alone. That's it. I did my part because I'm the breadwinner. And that's no, this is not, this is not the type of marriage. And this is not the type of life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in the Quran. Also, they have to respect the privacy of each other. Certain things are not, should not be shared or be told to the mother or the father or the friends. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this clearly in the Quran. Just before I go to the second point. So there are, okay, if you are saved from these three, then inshallah ta'ala, I would tell you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in that relationship. There are three kinds of abuse. Three kinds of abuse. You have the physical abuse. And this should be out of the question, the respective brothers and sisters in Islam should be out of the question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, لا تضربوا إماء الله لا تضربوا إماء الله Do not hit the female servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not even say do not hit women. He said the female servants. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that this is the, 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 the Allah's property. You, you cannot mess with Allah's property. That's basically like this. So this is the physical abuse. This should be out of the question 100%. And number two is the, 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 mental, the emotional and mental abuse. Like for example, this is by not showing appreciation. You will always look down upon each other. Nothing you like about her, nothing she likes about you. This is called emotional and mental abuse. This is even can be as great as the first one and sometimes even worse than the first one. And the last thing, the scariest one of them is the spiritual abuse. What, what is that the spiritual abuse? When the wrong is done, when the wrong is done and the religion is quoted. When the wrong is done and the religion is quoted. When we use Allah's religion, when we use ayat from the Quran, when we use a hadith from the Prophet and we use this like as a weapon against each other to justify our actions. So we have to be very careful, inshallah ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. The best among you are those who are the best to their families. The best among you, the best among you are those who are the best to their families. So subhanallah, this is what I just can give in this few, in the, in the few minutes that I have, inshallah ta'ala. The second part of the question, which is very important from the same sister, she said that um, just if you can, we all have kids and um, what is the best advice or what is the best way, especially when it comes to uh, choosing their um, life partner. This is very important because she mentioned her email that most of the time uh, their main concern is um, uh, what they call it, the looks and the, uh, the lifestyle and, and the, the status and the fit and this and that. So please, materialism. if you, huh? Materialism. materialism, basically, yes. So subhanAllah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran. And even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam insisted that, okay, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam insisted that 
um, the marriage should be okay firmly built on on a, on a solid foundation is striking a balance between physical mental spiritual and emotional needs so subhanallah so uh, what they call it it will not be as a, so that it will not be rocked by personality clashes or differences in attitude okay what does this mean the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in the Hadith Tunkah al-mar'atu li-arba' At first just I'm, I'm talking to boys right now Tunkah al-mar'atu li-arba' And the Prophet said Limaliha wa hasabiha wa jamaliha wa lidiniha Okay, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that um, A woman may be married for four things Four things, right? And one of them, number one is here Money, wealth attracts a lot of people. Wealth attracts a lot of people. And then her uh, noble descent, this is number two. Her beauty is number three. And religion is number four. And at the end, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْ يَدَاتِ Meaning, it choose the religiously committed one. Choose the religiously committed one. It doesn't mean that you ignore the physical beauty or the looks. No, but th th this does not mean this. But at the same time, subhanAllah, you have to look for a strong religious uh, belief and practice, intelligence, and good behavior. So the Muslim is not simply attracted by the, uh, what they call it, the empty-headed attitude displayed by some girls nowadays. No, he's attracted by a sound Muslim personality. The most important thing, yes, you can... You, you, you have to choose someone who's attractive to you, absolutely. And you should not even ignore this. That should be part of it. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, which woman is the best? He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who pleases him when he looks at her. And the one who obeys her when he tells her to do something. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this is one of the, the best mata in this life. But at the same time, Okay, again, um, appearance should not be ignored at the expense of the inner nature. And also the inner nature should not be ignored at the expense of what? At the expense of the physical beauty. This is very important, inshallah ta'ala. So when you choose your life partner, yes, it choose someone, not just someone who's religious, but someone who's understanding of the religion is sound whose understanding of the religion is sound, not closed-minded person, not closed-minded, someone who's open-minded, who understands Islam in the right way. Because sometimes, subhanAllah, if a person does not have the true understanding of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that person can be, can, can be worse than someone who's not practicing the Islam in the first place. And we have seen this with our own eyes. So you can see the beard up to here and the kuf and everything. And those people are terrible to their, to, to their wives. And at the same time, you see uh, Niqabi sisters fully covered and they are terrible to their husbands. Because what? Because they do not, their understanding of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not sound and is not strong. So we have to be very careful and take the nasiha of the Prophet sallallahu Alayhi wasallam. So this is the best way. Again, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Yes, you you um, you look for good looks. You look for good family. You look for education. All these things are important and cannot be ignored, right? But at the same time, religion also is very important. Is very very important if you are looking to raise righteous men and women, good." Um, um, uh, members of society, then absolutely deen has to be there. I have uh, seen some cases, the respect of brothers and sisters, and before I go to this, just uh, understand your rights and responsibilities. And before embarking upon this, very important to study this and to read about it. This is very important. This is not an easy decision. This is probably choosing your life partner is the most important decision that you make in your life. The most important one of them. Because someone that will be with you 24-7. 
right? So this is important. Then if this is the case, then subhanAllah, you have to know what are your rights, what are your responsibilities, how the, what, how does Allah and the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe this entire relationship? I have came across some people, they come during on the wedding day, coming to the masjid to perform the nikah. I asked them, for example, what is what is the dowry? What is the dowry? How much is the dowry? And subhanAllah, they, they just, oh, what is that? What is, what is mahar? What is dowry? Have no equity. This is marriage stars. This is the mandatory marriage gift. Something that, for example, nikah cannot be valid, cannot be established without knowing this. If we do not understand the requirements and the conditions for the nikah to be valid, then what is going to happen after that, right? So this is something very important, inshallah ta'ala, to read about it. Because these days, subhanAllah, marriage for so many people has become like a piece of cake, has become like a joke for so many people, joke. Joke, they just get angry over trivial matters. They utter divorce for, for example, if the food is not warm enough or this and that, they take it so lightly. This is a holy contract, a holy contract that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَخَذْنَ مِنْكُمْ مِثَاقًا غَلِيظًا They have taken from you a strong covenant. It should not be taken lightly. This is, must be honored, must be respected that contract. So insha'Allah ta'ala, this is my advice to uh, the unmarried people that insha'Allah ta'ala to focus on the deen and to choose the religiously committed person. You look into his or her level of religious commitment, ed education, behavior, attitude, conduct. These things are very important insha'Allah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace. May he subhanahu wa ta'ala Accept from all of us, Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a um, life full of happiness and success, joy and pleasure, Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us for, um, uh, bless you for your wife and bless your wife for you and keep you together in prosperity. And may he subhanahu wa ta'ala keep the shaitan away from us, Allahumma ameen. I just want to remind you that tomorrow I will live stream the uh, dua khatm al-Qur'an bi-ithnillahi azzawajal. This will happen right after the, the youth talk. So I will not give any lecture tomorrow. Right after we finish with the youth, inshallah ta'ala, I will start praying taraweeh. Of course, you cannot join me. You can't pray behind me at home. But I will pray just eight rak'ahs of taraweeh, inshallah, followed by dua khatm al-Qur'an bi-ithnillahi azzawajal. There are three videos in the comment section. Are you the husband that Allah describes? Are you the wife that Allah describes? And the status of women is that? Yes. In the comment section. Um, inshallah. Okay. So you have, yes. Very important. The status of women in Islam. Are you the husband that Allah describes? Are you the wife that Allah describes? We Most of these things are discussed there. Inshallah ta'ala. You can listen to them. Bi'idhnillah. Barakallahu feekum. Wa jazakumullahu khayra. Wassalamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.